three pound smartwatch will blow your mind. It has a very premium and durable design with a beautiful 49 millimeter display. It comes with a number of cool features like being able to see notifications from your phone, taking phone calls, measuring your heart rate. If you're a new Timu user, you can get this for just a little over three pounds. I've got money. Hey, hey, Dutch, leave her alone. Sorry. <laughs> He's always trying to make a deal. It's okay. He just found the best deal ever. You can have this for free. It's okay, ma'am. Really. I'm serious. You can get this tool set for free when you download Temu for the first time. Random travel hacks. This one pound bag isn't a regular backpack. Take a closer look and you'll see tech and accessories everywhere. We finally did it. Let's see what we got from Miss Timu. Once I wasn't going to go shopping, but hey, these things were mad cheap. Feels like Christmas Day for real. First thing I'm guessing is like a little set. First thing is this set. Do you like it? Because I love it. It's so comfy. Oh, I have to get this Miley Bay slipper. Here are the slippers. I got like a little duster thingy. It'll help me clean the dust off of here. Timu, the number one shopping app on the app store. Everyone, and I mean everyone, is shopping on Timu because the prices are just too good to be true. I mean, come on now. This stuff is just too cheap. Today, we're going to be finding out if Timu is legit or if it's a scam. And yes, before you ask, this video is sponsored by Timu. Again, huge thanks to Timu for sponsoring this video. All of these opinions were my true, honest opinions. I absolutely loved everything we unboxed. Every single thing that we unboxed will be linked below if any of it caught your interest. So download Timu, get shopping because the steals and deals are on Timu. Timu is confirmed legit. And do not forget to use my code SGRACE50 for 50% 50 off your first purchase. So as a left-wing person, you're supposed to believe in the inherent cooperativeness of the human race, in that fundamentally we just want to help each other survive. And as an anti-capitalist, of course, I do believe that on a fundamental level, but stuff like Timu irritates me on so many different levels. And I think what it often proves is just the human race has been so brainwashed by neoliberal capitalism. We can't see bad things when, you know, it's staring us in the face. So Timu markets itself as like shopping like a billionaire. That's literally like the tagline on the app store for their app. And loads of these videos, people are saying, it feels like Christmas, I'm getting all this stuff for free. And none of these people ask themselves, why am I getting this stuff for free or why am I getting it for such a low price? Like no one thinks about why, like no one understands why this might happen or even questions it because no one cares. And you guys probably like the film Fight Club, which was, you know, released in 1999, had a big commentary about the emptiness of consumerism. But the way the 1990s tackled consumerism was completely different to what it is today because in the 1990s, it was about having a stable office job where you could afford all your basic needs, but you had no purpose or meaning in life. So you just bought loads of crap to fill a void. Now, people don't have anything and people don't have jobs that pay enough. People don't even have jobs. We can't afford anything. Everything's so expensive. So when something like Timu comes along being like, well, look what you can buy for these cheap prices. Everyone is like, hell yeah. I'm gonna buy into this consumerism and there is a very low cost of entry so I can numb myself to the reality that I can't afford anything and the world is like a literal hellhole. It's a massive contrast to how we viewed consumerism in the 1990s. And of course, what we're gonna be talking about in this video, like I have with other videos, is why YouTubers, TikTokers, whatever, should not be doing sponsorships with Timu if you care about a whole host of issues because this, you know, encapsulate so many different things. Fast fashion, the environment, gross labor exploitation of far poorer countries. It all combines into this. And obviously, you know, things about privacy, cybersecurity, there is just nothing really redeeming about this. And yes, I admit someone buying something off Timu or, you know, the Western equivalent, something like Amazon, doesn't make them a terrible person. The actual saying of no ethical consumption under capitalism is recognizing how most things that you buy are built on, at the very least, labor exploitation, but probably loads of other horrible shit as well. But at the same time, it's also not an excuse to do whatever you want. And I've made a whole video about how I am a hypocrite as well, because I try my best. Have I ever ordered off Amazon? Yeah. Have I ever ordered off like a shitty retailer? Have I ever bought something from Sports Direct in the UK? Yeah, I have. I just try to limit that as much as possible. So if you're someone who's bought something off Timu, not calling you a terrible person who's absolutely complicit. I guess I want this video to just be like rethinking 
what you do as a consumer and obviously calling out other creators just don't promote this shit and hopefully this video serves as another one of the many videos calling out Timu but I guess I'm coming at it more from you know communist anti-capitalist lens rather than just like you know this is cheap crap that might not be what you actually paid for because yeah, I don't really care about that part of it. So all of that's coming up for you today. Please follow me on social media at The Cavernacle, mainly on Instagram and my travel Instagram, but I'm using Freds and Blue Sky instead of Twitter these days, so go check them out. And also support my work on Patreon. Also, you can join the private patrons Discord server if you become a patron. So Timu obviously exploded first in popularity in America and I wasn't actually that familiar with it until recently. I just thought it was just like another AliExpress but that's until I started getting like loads and loads of Instagram ads. I think my algorithm for ads is just so messed up after doing that AI scam video on um, Monday but yeah just loads of influencers marketing Timu products to me and I'm gonna have a whole section of this video about those Instagram ads. But I just thought I'd explain how Timu works because I wasn't completely familiar with how all of it works because I'm not using it. I'm not downloading the app because of privacy concerns. So basically just quickly for some economic theory to explain how these things work. Like, so if you're about my age, nearly like 30 years old, it feels really weird to say, you probably remember that China being a bogeyman in geopolitics wasn't always the case. Like people didn't really care about China as like the enemy of the West until like, I don't know, the 2010s and stuff. So when I was younger, we didn't really know much about China, but you knew that most of your consumer goods always had made in China written on them. Like you recognized that. And for your clothes, it was often like made in Bangladesh, made in India, made in Pakistan, which we're going to talk about a bit later. But basically what happened with the advent of globalized capitalism in like the late 20th century, Western corporations and governments realized they no longer had to make stuff at home to sell to people in England or America. Because what you often had was unionized workforces making like better quality materials and it's just all around more expensive. So a lot of people have said when they wear their parents' clothes in America and it says like made in America, it's far better quality. And it shows because it's lasted like decades and decades where you buy something from like, I don't know, Primark today in the UK and it's made in India or Bangladesh and it's obviously the material is way worse by design so it degrades so you have to buy more like basically fast fashion summarized for you. And what people like Margaret Thatcher, Ronald Reagan, they all realize you can move all this industry abroad no matter what it is and it will just be all around cheaper for Western corporations to go exploit the labor of poor people in developing countries rather than pay better wages for people in like England to make similar things. So what happened with China under Deng Xiaoping getting better relationships with the West, Jimmy Carter obviously started that. They obviously worked together against the Soviets during the war in Afghanistan, the Chinese and the Americans. And basically what happened is that Asia became the sweatshop for Western corporations. So China, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan. But China was used for more than just, you know, the garment industry, it was making basically everything. And the Western corporations love this for a while because you're getting cheap labor in a massive country which is getting friendly over the West. So while that was all happening, China was developing itself. And Western governments and corporations were perfectly happy with the situation because it benefited them. And us as consumers, we didn't mind either because everything's cheaper now because it's all coming from China. Sure, the quality isn't as good as the old products, but it's like a quarter of the price and I don't have as much investment in buying it so I can make more frivolous purchases. And that's when you do have stuff like Fight Club where they have so much meaningless crap and junk because everything is degrading, but it's cheaper. So why not buy it? But basically what Timu does is cut out the middleman. No longer do you have to buy cheap Chinese goods from Amazon or a Western corporation. You can buy it directly from the source and that's why it's still cheaper because yes, even though China has developed and the economy has improved, wages have improved, the you know quality of life, life expectancy, all that stuff has improved over the last 30 years. At the same time, it is still a place where you will find people working in terrible conditions for low wages, making loads of cheap crap to sell to Westerners. And that's what Timu basically is. So Wikipedia goes on to say, Timu allows China-based vendors to sell and ship directly to customers without having to rely on intermediate distributors in a destination country, making products more affordable. Some sellers have stated that Timu asked them to lower their prices, even to the point of selling items at a loss, 
Timu offers free goods to some users who successfully refer new users via affiliate codes, social media, and gamification. Online purchases on Timu, it requires its sellers to offer their products at prices lower than those found on AliExpress. When multiple sellers offer the same product, Timu authorizes only the one with the lowest price. Items not meeting Timu's minimum sales requirement are removed from the platform. So an article in Time by Andrew R. Chow, the truth about Timu, the most downloaded new app in America, is just interesting at giving you the perspective of how this stuff grows through social media because that's a massive part of Timu. It's all about getting other people involved. It's about getting free products for yourself by inviting other people to join the platform. Timu's prices are cheap. Many new customers aren't actually paying anything at all. That's because Timu has launched a campaign on social media in which the more you convince others to sign up, the more credit you earn. This has enabled some people who have earned enough credit to receive home goods without even giving Timu their credit card information. It seems like they're being subsidized to be a loss leader in order to gain a market share, which is not unlike what Amazon did for a long time, says Douglas Smith, a professor of computer science at Vanderbilt University. Brianna Lukey, who lives in Fort Worth, Texas, says she received $200 worth of items from Timu for free. She first heard about the app from a friend a month ago and was initially leery of it. I know there's a lot of things that go around that may not be legit, but this was. Lukey posted about Timu on Facebook, TikTok, and Snapchat and eventually convinced friends to join the app, in the process earning a bunch of credits. She used them to order a ring light, for her plaster art small business, as well as oil diffusers, several necklaces, and a mouse and keyboard for her daughter. Lukey says the keyboard works fine, and here's the most important part, I didn't think it would be that great quality, but it's pretty good for being free, she says, so I'm grateful for it. Timu may have given Lukey many items without her turning over any cash, but the company is still getting free advertising via Lukey's social network in return. Timu is branding the campaign as a way for communities to band together to save money. Their slogan is team up, price down. Now I said that article is from December 2022, but I'm not using Twitter at the moment. I'm just using threads. If you type in Timu on threads, you just have so many people spamming, just posting their invitation links to Timu so they can get free gift cards, they can get free credit, so they can buy more cheap crap. And that's where like the Fight Club thing comes into it for me, is that they're spamming all this stuff. They're like having no integrity at all. Just being like, please sign up to this horrible app so I can get free shit, like pointless shit that is cheap and rubbish and won't last. Because why? Why do you need that? Why? Why do you need a $20 keyboard for free which will probably break after six months. Again, this whole capitalist brainwashing, I just cannot stand that people don't think at all about what's happening and why they can get these things for free. Like it was saying there in the article, Timu might be doing this at a loss, but I still doubt it. I still doubt it because we all know that the labor exploitation that goes into making such cheap crap keeps the margins still like pretty good, I'd say. So I don't even think they would be making a loss for this stuff. And I'd like to see the retention rate as well of how many people who might get something for free and then keep buying stuff. And the actual quality is the main thing there, right? Because that person said, you know, it's okay, the keyboard. Not the best, but it's free. And if the keyboard, you know, seems to be something that would retail for like $50, but you get it for 10, you might have a similar approach. And that is the whole thing with consumer capitalism. Because we can get consumer goods so cheap, we don't really value anything as much because we don't expect things to last. And we can go on about planned obsolescence as well. And again, this just covers so many different things. But the one thing that always frustrates me, and this is talking about other leftists as well, American leftists don't realize how consumer capitalism is still based on capitalist exploitation of poorer countries. So although we are all like victims under capitalism and most people are getting their labor exploited under capitalism, if you're someone in America who can buy loads of cheap consumer goods, that is because America as a nation state and American corporations in bed with the government, they can exploit poorer countries to make these goods for cheap and they sell it to the American market where people who literally make this stuff would not be able to afford to buy this stuff. You see it in Ethiopia, which has some of the, you know, lowest wages in the entire world, but they're making like Tommy Hilfiger stuff, right? And they're selling that to Western countries. And Timu kind of works like that as well. And that's the advertising that Timu really focuses on. You are actually getting stuff for free. Now, these Instagram ads I got recently really play this up in these very weird sketches. And 
they are collaborating with other users, but I don't know what these profile pages are even meant to be. So here is two for you. I've got money. Hey, hey, Dutch, leave her alone. Sorry. <laughs> He's always trying to make a deal. It's okay. He just found the best deal ever. You can have this for free. It's okay, ma'am, really. I'm serious. You can get this tool set for free when you download them for the first time. If it's free, it's probably no good. Thanks anyways. No, let me show you. It's all made of pearl vanadium steel. Contains all common sizes of sockets, as well as various types of quick wrenches and combination wrenches. There are 151 pieces in total. More than enough to handle any repair work. Wow, not bad. Where can I get it? Click on the video to download Temu now and get it for free. Ah! These travel backpacks are literally free! Why does anyone want them? I think I have an idea. People don't trust that they can get them for free! Why? Did you guys switch the product to something else or something? No, these are real backpacks! This backpack is perfect for traveling! It has a super large capacity, a separate huge compartment, and a waterproof sphere! It also has a built-in wet and dry separation feature! It's such a great deal, thanks to Timo's new effort campaign! So did you hide them or something? That must be the reason they can't find them! No, of course not! They can just click this video to download Timo and participate! So yeah, these stupid sketches playing up the angle that if you download the Timo app, you can basically get shit for free. It's basically giving stuff away. Now there's other adverts I've been getting which are playing up how cheap goods are. Like stuff you'd normally spend like maybe a hundred pounds on, maybe 50 pounds, 20 pounds for like a bag or a smartwatch. Well, if you sign up to Timu, you can get them for like three pounds each. How amazing. I wonder how that is achieved. I guess these goods are just really, really good and really cheap because that's definitely something that exists in the world. Three pound smartwatch will blow your mind. It has a very premium and durable design with a beautiful 49 millimeter display. It comes with a number of cool features like being able to see notifications from your phone, taking phone calls, measuring your heart rate, tracking your workouts, and so much more. You also have a number of different watch faces to choose from, so you can customize it to your liking. And if you're worried about the battery life, don't be, because this will give you 30 days of super long standby time, which is crazy. It's compatible with both iOS and Android, and if you wanna take advantage of the limited time offer, click the link in my bio or search for this code inside of Timu and get your discount. And if you're a new Timu user, you can get this for just just a little over three pounds. So what are you waiting for? Take advantage of this offer today before it's too late. Some travel hacks. This one pound bag isn't a regular backpack. Take a closer look and you'll see tech and accessories everywhere. It has an external USB that offers a fixed charging station. The back section has a padded laptop compartment to protect it from damage. There's this hidden pocket to stop your passport from being stolen. The main section has enough space to store all your clothes and the front compartment offers more room for anything else. It's water resistant and has this front pocket that's waterproof for you to put your wet clothes after the gym. Plus, you don't need to worry about airport luggage limits as it has these four side buckles to help flatten the bag. So the phrase, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is, is something that has been stuck in my mind throughout my entire life and is always good to remember when you watch these types of ads. So first of all, you see that guy advertising a smartwatch. And if you've never owned a smartwatch, you would be like, that looks pretty good. It has a heart rate monitor, I can read all my messages. It basically does everything an Apple Watch does. I mean, if you actually own a smartwatch, even like a lower gen one, then you know that looks like crap. It looks like something that would probably break in a month. It looks so unsmooth. It looks just like a massive, obviously what it is, a Chinese knockoff. But again, if you don't know that, it looks great. And if it's only three pounds, who cares if it's a bunch of shit, but this advert makes it look great. And the same with the bag, one pound bag for all of that stuff. Oh, what a deal that is. That bag actually looks way better than any bag I've ever owned, and it's the cheapest thing ever. Surely there could be nothing wrong with either that or the mechanisms in place to make something like that so cheap. I've just scored the deal of the century from a stupid Instagram ad. Again, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. And for multiple reasons, these are too good to be true, and I would say that both these products are actual shit anyway. And even if they are good quality, which I doubt, like I said, you know what's gone into that is very gross labor exploitation, which has allowed these products to be sold for a very, very cheap price. And also a small note about the first one. It's by a guy called Ben Obi Tech, who seems to be like a very, very small tech YouTuber. Loads of his videos are collabs with Timu. So I think a lot of people do this in that 
I don't think this guy's job is to become like maybe a full-time YouTube creator really at the moment. The business model is he's basically like a Timu creator because Timu have an affiliate program, which seems pretty favorable at the moment. So if you just make your you know Instagram page a Timu page, essentially Timu takes that and advertises your own page everywhere because you're sponsored by them. So it's kind of like a win-win if you want to get big in the tech space, I guess. Timu even have videos on YouTube how you can earn up to $5,000 a month with the affiliate program. But that was just a small taste of the adverts I've been getting because so much of this Timu stuff is just, you know, exploiting influencers, parasocial relationships. It pretty much just relies on this. Now, I'm someone who obviously doesn't watch a lot of like shopping haul content. I think that's probably pretty clear. But on TikTok, it seems to be more popular than YouTube. Like so many people post their hauls, various different like fashion outlets or ordering different stuff from different companies. And Timu has exploited this pretty effectively in that you have people having these absolutely massive hauls of stuff. And it's very, very cheap. And according to the influencers who are being paid by Timu or are getting affiliate money from you buying from their links, it's all like very, very good quality as we've already seen in the adverts. Now, how I would describe most Timu products that I get advertised or I just see is that they're very aesthetically pleasing. Like you could imagine them in your own life and thinking about like how that is nice to look at. I've seen a lot of them for like diffusers, like nice little lights, nice little trays, stuff that would maybe be a bit of a gimmick or a novelty, but might make your life a little bit easier. I feel that's the vibe I get generally with Timu. And according to every single influencer, all of this stuff is just like great quality. And it's pretty much the same as the regular stuff. And we're gonna get into that a bit later with someone saying that $7 AirPods they bought from Timu are actually as good as like Apple AirPod Pro 2s, which is just such a fucking lie. I just can't imagine how little shame you'd have to have to say that shit to people. And again, that's why I get depressed. People just see Timu as buying cheap shit. Influencers just see it as an easy sponsorship. And no one thinks about anything. Like, it's just like, just do it for money. And don't have any critical thinking at all about anything to do with this product. Don't research the company. Don't do anything. So here's the first TikTok I want to show you by a creator called The Amberly Sarah. Now, this person isn't like someone who just posts Timu hauls and stuff. Like, most of their content isn't even sponsored from what I was looking at. So this isn't like really hate directed at them, but I just found their video because I typed in Timu Hall onto TikTok and I got this one and I got a couple others. And I wanted to talk about this one and just talk about how it's kind of like marketed to just your average person. So let's watch the first one. We finally did it. Let's see what we got from Miss Timu. Once I wasn't gonna go shopping, but hey, these things were mad cheap. Feels like Christmas day for real. First thing I'm guessing is like a little set. First thing is this set. Do you like it? Because I love it. It's so comfy. Oh, I have to get this Miley Mae slipper. Here are the slippers. We got like a little duster thingy. It'll help me clean the dust off of here. Uh, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> Come on, it's to hang up like my hats and stuff. Okay, now we're on to the next bag. When I tell you I've always wanted these as a kid. It's a donut blanket. I love it. I also got a cookie one because why not? Next up, we have this brown sweater. This is how it looks. It's actually super cute and actually comfy. I got these three little glass jars to help me like organize my desk. We made this my vanity. I have Q-tips in here, powder puffs in here, and cotton balls in here. It's literally perfect. Also got a little shower drainer so my hair don't get in here. Favorite piece is probably this one just because it surprised me the most on how like good the quality is. Like I was a little confused when I saw it, but I absolutely love it and I will be wearing it. But I have this home code that you guys can use to get some money off your order because why not? And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, I love you. So I don't know if Timu have any control over like this influencer marketing because it's all about like the link in the bio. Maybe Timu pay and do that. Or maybe it's all based on affiliate marketing. But what you get there and you've seen the prices, the prices are just so insanely cheap. Like 17 cents for anything of value is just crazy. And even the influencer in question is talking about, you know, well, why not? It might as well buy two 80 cent blankets. And again, there's just like no thinking by anyone who consumes this. Why can you buy something like that for 80 cents? Like why? How can you do that? That's what I'm trying to get people to think about with this video. But also what I was talking about as well, everything in that video is pretty much useless in terms of the utility. Like you don't need it. Maybe the clothes with a jumper, which he says is okay quality. You don't need the rest of it. It's all just useless stuff that maybe might make your life a tiny bit easier. 
But it's all based upon like mindless consumerism of, oh yeah, I need that. I need that because it will make my life better because I have a massive gaping hole within me where I just need to endlessly buy shit to make myself feel something or make myself numb to the reality that is, you know, living in capitalist hell. So if you type in Timu Hall into um, TikTok, you'll just get loads of videos like that. People showing off massive hauls of cheap garbage you don't need for unbelievable prices, trying to get you to sign up through their code. And you know, not all of these people will be like very successful influencers. Maybe people like need this money to get by. I'm sympathetic to the grind in some ways. Sometimes there's companies like BetterHelp or this one, I'm like, there's so many problems. Can we just not? And their success actually relies on us being complicit. Like Timu especially relies on people not caring. And because it's so cheap, people don't care. And like I said, because we're never taught to think critically about economics, we don't realize why things might be so cheap. But anyway, here is the most like, probably the worst example I found. But now there's a creator called Sarah Grace on YouTube and she did a video sponsored by Timu. Now there's loads of videos on YouTube, which are like, I bought the Timu knockoff version of like a PS5, right? And none of these videos are actually sponsored by Timu because the creators are just like ripping the shit out of what they found. Like this is like terrible AirPods. This is like a terrible knockoff phone I've bought. But a video like this is bad because it's not saying that. It's saying, look how good it is. It's basically the same thing for like what? Like a hundredth of the price. So I'm not gonna show you loads of this video. So go and watch the video for yourself and you can make your own mind up about it. But I do wanna play one segment because I felt like I knew this best. And it's about knockoff AirPods they bought. I currently have AirPods in my ear. I have these ones, they like the AirPod 2s. And I used to have the AirPod Pros, but they hurt my ears too much. But they're probably one of the best headphones I've ever owned in my life in terms of sound quality. And I've also owned like Skull Candy earbuds and other ones, which really don't compare to the Apple ones. So I kind of understand like the difference between like actual really good AirPods or wireless earbuds and ones that don't sound good or just very uncomfortable. So let's have a look at this. Today we're gonna to be finding out if Timu is legit or if it's a scam. And yes, before you ask, this video is sponsored by Timu. I've requested the right to give my true and honest opinion on every product that we unbox today. So let's get started. Oh my gosh, they sent so much cool stuff in here. And real AirPod Pros, let me tell you that much. So here are our AirPod Pros. Obviously, you know, the box is a little different. You know, it's not exactly an Apple box. These headphones were $11. $11. Apple sell these for 250 bucks. So Apple, why have you been ripping us off this whole time? They look so good. Like just looking at them, they are Apple AirPod Pros to me. I would not be able to tell the difference. For $11, if these even turn on, I'm impressed. Okay, so they are on, they're working. Okay, so they have them in. Now it's just a matter of how good the sound quality is. Oh, is it not in the headphones? Hold on. Uh oh. Uh oh. Why is it not playing in the headphones? So we have a problem. They're like not like connecting. The eleven dollars is showing right now. Okay, they finally connected. I'm not even lying. I'm. They sound literally almost as good as my AirPod Pro. And I paid two hundred and fifty dollars for those. These are the real deal. Oh my gosh. I actually love these. Okay, I have to give these a ten out of ten. They sound amazing. They look amazing. Oh my gosh. If you guys don't buy these, I don't even know what to tell you because that is incredible. Again, huge thanks to Timu for sponsoring this video. All of these opinions were my true honest opinions. I absolutely loved everything we unboxed. Every single thing that we unboxed will be linked below if any of it caught your interest. So download Timu, get shopping because the steals and deals are on Timu. That is probably some of the most shameless marketing I've ever seen in my life because first of all, even if they were as good quality at first glance as real AirPod Pros, like how can we trust that they're actually good? You use them for about two seconds, right? But at the same time, it's just such a joke that these could even be comparable. Like you'd actually have to be deaf to think $11 earbuds are as good as $250 ones. Like I said, I know the difference between the AirPod Pros, I used to use them a lot, and something cheaper. Even something that costs like 100 pounds, like my old, I forgot what brand it was. It could be Skull Candy earbuds. And to put it in for two seconds saying you're gonna be mad at people for not buying them. They're 10 out of 10 and they sound just as good. And they're only $11 compared to 250. Again, why? Why? And it shows you the danger of influencer marketing in that if you're advertising on a TV channel and you say something like, these knockoff AirPods are actually just as good as the real ones, right? You could actually get in some trouble. But if you're just like an influencer like me, 
you put some AirPods on for two seconds and say, these are just as good. You can just say that. You can just lie, say it's your opinion, and then people trust you because they love you for whatever reason, and then they go and buy this shitty knockoff, making you more money, making Timu more money, but obviously it's not in their interest because they're just going to end up with a pair of headphones that will probably break relatively soon. But this is just like one little extract of one video there are so many videos like this promoting this company, promoting like all these garbage consumer goods from China, all this fast fashion, and people don't care at all. People don't care about what they're promoting. People don't care. They might be like, you know, scamming their followers into buying cheap shit. They just want to get the money. And it's just like peak neoliberal consumer capitalism to become like a successful influencer and just think like all your success is earned by yourself nothing to do with your audience. You don't respect the audience that you've created. It's just because you're amazing and you're just going to use that position to make even more money by promoting the, like the embodiment of consumer capitalist garbage to your followers and just not feeling bad about it in the slightest because, you know, at least you get the bag. And in the description, she actually has the links to all these products. So uh, Timu are going to have a record of everyone who buys that stuff because she told them that they're just as good as the real thing. When they are 100% are not. It's just false to say that they are. So any influencer who takes some sort of Timu sponsorship just doesn't care about you as the audience because they know it's crap. That person knows those products are bad, by the way. There's no way she thinks they're as good. And most of these people are just promoting it to make money. Now, for a lot of creators, influencers, they don't care about anything. So you can't even call them a hypocrite, right? They don't care about environmentalism, they don't care about anti-capitalism, so what do I actually expect? But um, I want to go into this a bit further, because if anyone claims that they are like someone who cares about a multitude of issues, but promotes this company and advertises it to their audience that actually make their career as something legit to use, then they really don't care about it more than they care about money. Now, Timu is like a very new company. So it's hard to assess the environmental impact, but um, I just read a good article today by Greenpeace talking about the impact generally of this type of like e-commerce stuff. So I just want to talk about that a little bit. So Greenpeace was trying to find the Timu climate footprint and it couldn't really find it, but they said, uh, we couldn't find the right information to make a judgment and we combed through all the usual places where publicly listed corporates make climate disclosures, but Timu doesn't do this. So with the absence of this information, the general public is in the dark about what impact shopping on Timu does to the planet, but why we should care about e-commerce generally. It says Timu's daily operations will bring about multiple environmental impacts, transportation being a focus. So the continuous prosperity of e-commerce platforms, the skyrocketing number of orders has led to an increase in express delivery services, which also means an increase in transportation and carbon emissions. This is particularly concerning in the case of cross-border e-commerce, First, with consumers increasingly demanding quick deliveries, the long-haul transport of products could drive up global demand for carbon-intensive air freight services. According to the International Air Transport Association, 131 billion parcels, or 80% of cross-border e-commerce, are now transported by air, and this could reach 95% by 2040, with air freight emitting significantly more CO2 than shipping, cross-border e-commerce's carbon emissions must be taken seriously by companies and regulators. Packaging waste in South Korea, for example, in a 2022 study, it was estimated given the same amount of money spent, online shopping generates 4.8 times more packaging waste than offline shopping. So in terms of chemicals, with small value parcels not being systematically regulated by quality watchdogs, it is unclear how cross-border e-commerce companies can effectively keep their products safe from hazardous chemicals. A Greenpeace Germany investigation found that of the 47 Xi'an products tested, seven of them contained hazardous chemicals that break EU regulations, and about a third of the products contain hazardous chemicals at levels of concern. So while Timu specifically doesn't have a proper like breakdown of how bad it is for the environment, it's pretty clear to anyone that if you are ordering cheap shit from China that comes to the UK or America, there's going to be significant environmental impacts across the whole board. And it's probably not the best way to be shopping if you care about climate change and stuff like that than just heading to the local shops. Because sure, even though there is obviously this supply network which emits CO2 emissions and no one's denying that, like it outlined there, because of the quick delivery times coming from China, you have to send them on a plane. You can't send them on ships as much, so 
yeah, that is bad for the environment. Now, some countries are getting sick of this. So France is actually trying to pass laws against this type of commerce. So what France's crackdown on Chien and Timu means for global ultra-fast fashion. France's lower house of parliament unanimously approved a kill bill on the 14th of March 2024 that targets fast fashion and ultra-fast fashion sold by online retail giants like Chien and Timu. The measure is a move to offset the fast fashion industry's environmental impact by banning the advertising of certain ultra-fast fashion companies and penalizing them with an annually increasing in increment of up to 10 euros per article of clothing by 2030. The bill would also mandate that fast fashion retailers, including items reuse, repair, recycling, and environmental impact near the product's price. So Emily Stockall, the Vice President of Advocacy and Community Engagement at Remake, a sustainable fashion non-profit organization said, it's important when the price conversation comes up for people to realize that the price of fast fashion is being kept artificially low. It's essentially being subsidized by the fact that these companies are not paying their workers adequately. So this idea that fast fashion pricing is the bar for clothing that consumers have come to expect is an artificial construction. So they continue, lawmakers should ensure that the funds collected via these penalties flow in the direction of where that environmental impact is occurring. For example, the frontline communities facing the most environmental impact because of fast fashion are often communities in the global south, so as penalties are collected to address environmental impact, how are those funds distributed to the frontline communities most impacted? As far as I can tell, the policy doesn't address those things, and I don't think it would ever address those things. So hopefully that French bill passes the various, you know, houses and gets signed into law, but like she was outlining there, is the money going to go into the communities affected most by fast fashion through labor exploitation or through the immense waste of fast fashion, like in landfills and stuff? Will that be addressed? No, it'll probably just go back to the French government, won't it? So although it's a good step to take, that's what I mean about people thinking about globalized capitalism, because we think about the impact in terms of our own country, we think about the prices and stuff, but we don't think about really the people who make these things or whose labor is exploited to an insane degree to make these products and lawmakers in France, I don't think are gonna be thinking about that either because even Western leftists do have this problem about thinking about the global dynamics of capitalism rather than just the domestic dynamics of capitalism. So whether it be fast fashion or just getting like consumer goods from developing countries or poorer countries like China, it is all about capitalist exploitation for Western countries generally to get way cheaper consumer goods because if you made that domestically it would just be too expensive to people to buy and that's the problem isn't it that we are no longer now with things like Timu and even Amazon we're no longer willing to buy more expensive things that are better quality we just want cheap garbage because that's what we've become accustomed to and again we don't think about why it's cheaper and because of neoliberal consumerist brainwashing we don't care why it's cheaper either. It's cheaper, so that's good for me because we always just think about ourselves. And that's what these influencers are thinking about. That's what most people think about. And that's why I'm so doom appealed on just generally the world getting better because I don't think humans are capitalists by nature or neoliberals by nature, but I think neoliberalism has been so effective in brainwashing so many of us to just think of ourselves as one person and not actually think about the systems that play in the world which affects everyone, but a lot of us don't actually mind benefiting off that exploitation as long as it's good for us. So as long as I'm getting cheap shit, well, who cares about that sweatshop worker in China, India, Bangladesh, or Ethiopia? Not my problem. If they want to get out of that poverty, maybe they should work harder or go, you know, university or something, or be born in a rich country. Now, I was going to dedicate more time to this because I thought it'd be a bigger concern, but there's also lots of concerns in terms of privacy and data harvesting by Timu's actual, you know, mobile app. But because it's a newer company, I was trying to find like concrete evidence, just like TikTok, there isn't loads on it. And there is like an over-focus on Timu and TikTok acting like a lot of the stuff they probably do is unique to them. But I think the problems you get with their data harvesting and like your lack of privacy on these apps itself, it's just something all massive tech corporations do. And these two companies are definitely doing it but there's obviously way more evidence for actual Western corporations doing it, which we don't seem to care about as much. But yeah, there are elements to that as well. Like if you don't want giant corporations um, selling off your data or having access to loads of private information, 
yeah, don't download the app, I would say, because we just don't know at this point and it probably is doing bad things with your personal information, just like Meta, Twitter, Snapchat, all those corporations do. So this is a long video. And again, it was trying to serve as why Timu is bad. But yeah, influencers should not be promoting Timu. And the problem is a lot of influencers in their very self-centered world don't actually care about how it affects the planet. They don't care about how it affects you, proven by people giving, t you know, blatantly false testimony, in my opinion. They just want to get the bag. And a lot of that is encouraged by social media influencers, like get that bag no matter what, because they see it as primarily a job because they don't care about their audience. But yeah, if you care about your audience and you don't want to promote bad companies, don't be sponsored by BetterHelp, HelloFresh or Timu. And Timu is bad in so many different ways. Like we could talk about this probably forever because it pulls in so many different problems around the world. It pulls in influencer culture or very self-centered neoliberal influencer culture, fast fashion, consumer capitalism, all these different things just together make this just like so bad. And yeah, Amazon is pretty similar as well. I'm not going to pretend they're not. And a lot of the problems with Timu can also be applied to things like Amazon. But I guess what it is, is because there is no middleman between you and the cheap goods from China, it just seems like Christmas for a lot of people that they can buy all this cheap shit they don't need and they don't have to pay expensive Western prices for a more expensive product, which maybe hasn't been as made with exploited labor, because why would you do that? In this lovely free market of choice, why not choose Timu? Who cares about all the bad shit going into that? Why choose to buy union-made clothes, which might be more expensive, when you can buy stuff for $2 from China? Why would you do that? And a lot of people currently, they wouldn't even understand why you would choose the more expensive option made by a union in your own country. Because again, consumer capitalist and neoliberal brainwashing, people just don't give a shit about anyone but themselves. And that is a sad reality of the world now. And again... It goes against human nature, is what I would say, but it's because of so much insane brainwashing we are all fed 24-7, including from social media influencers, which Timu have effectively exploited for their marketing. So that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and if you made it this far, thank you for watching.